All right, so today we are doing a change on the inverter compressor, inverter PCB on this condenser here. So these two are linked. I think they have about seven indoors. Most of them are ducted units. Um, yeah, so a bit of background. <coughs> this, is, this is one of my regular sites, so I didn't diagnose this one. Um, a previous tech came out, said it was giving a E5 fault and that the compressor and the board needs to be replaced. Um, a long time ago, so I did one maintenance here. Um, and found that there was a leaking suction flare. I'll see if I've got photos. If not, I mean, I've got to repair it today anyway, but it actually turned out to be a part of the same system. So we will repair that as well. Um, either way, I've got two days here. Um, I think it's about 40 odd kilos of gas we've got to reclaim. And because we're, we're kind of on a roof up here, we're actually um, getting the compressor crane lifted up. So I've got to get a bit of a rig along because that's, uh, what's the time about? It's about 7.30 now. Um, and I think the crane's getting here at 11. So yeah, first thing we'll do is we'll jump in, we'll start reclaiming the gas. Hopefully it turns out to be a nice day though. It's looking lovely. Anyway, got to walk all the way down here. Little man all over there, all my stuff's at the bottom of the ladder. This is our culprit here. Luckily the one right at the front works out pretty well. Um, yeah, this one actually only has, there you go, six indoors. So. Cool. So like I said, these two here run in tandem. It's actually that one, that's the master that I'm working on. Um, and they put that into like emergency operation, so to bypass the master. So that's fine. This one's still running. Um, what I'll do is I'll go down and turn the indoors off so there's no call, take that one out of emergency operation, and that way I can then put it into um, refrigerant recovery mode. So this is our master controller here. Um, I'm pretty sure it's 01, 02, and there's like uh, 10, no, 8, 9, 10, and 15 or something, but I've actually just noticed that there's a uh, couple of are in fault as well that don't have anything to do with um, where I'm working, so that'd be interesting. It's, I think it says it's a, uh, uh, details, J3, which I think is like a discharge through Mr. Error, so interesting. <laughs> uh, that's probably all the time. Uh, anyway, so we'll go ahead and just turn all these ones off. Uh, stop. Anyway, I'm gonna go through and do that just to confirm I'm getting the right ones, but yeah. Scrap what I said about it looking like a nice day. What the hell's this? <laughs> Fuck. Awesome. Condensers have stopped, that's good. Come on, man. Not now, eh? <laughs> right, so <clears throat> I'll try to do this um, so you guys can see, but again, I'm not too used to this style. Anyway, so to get into BS, uh, get into mode two, I've got to hit that mode button BS1 for five seconds. Whoops. There we go, get out of it. Try that again, eh? Two, three, four, five. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm gonna hit BS2 uh, 38 times, I believe. Actually, I might just double check that. Yep, so 38 times takes me to that. Then hit the BS3 button. Now I'm pretty sure I have to hit BS2. I'll just double check. So I'm just hiding from the rain a little bit. <laughs> Pretty sure taking it out of the mode now. Sorry, I was a bit um, up and down before, but I'll kind of show you now. So basically hit, oh, how can I do this? Still raining a little bit, so trying to keep it away, but basically hold back, no, no scrap that. Okay, hold BS1, oh, fucking hell, ready? Hold BS1 down for five seconds. Oh my God. Okay, hold BS1 down for five seconds. Right, then hit BS2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, so before I put this thing into refrigerant recovery mode, I'm just gonna get my uh, my gauges set up. I've actually got the Appion Megaflow kit today, which is awesome. So, oh, and another little cool tool that works picked up. Subcooler, awesome.
post that up now. Got the Mega Flow kit uh, with the T, the 38 T. Coming into the sub cooler, I've just got to go get some water into the bucket. I'll get the scales underneath it as well, but we'll put it into refrigerant recovery mode now. Okay, it's basically the same process, mode two, but you just go to 21 times. Again, I'll, um, I'll put, I've will i already put the thing up so you can go back and have a look at it anyway, but it's, a, it's the same process. Anyway, just had all the valves open up now. So we're gonna go find some water and power for this thing. We'll get it going. Ted, water's in, power. All right, we're good to go. No, I haven't turned the recovery on yet. We'll just see how much we can get in without using it. Um, we're not obviously using the gas because this thing had a leak. Uh, we're also gonna do a, an oil test. I've got some stuff there for that. Uh, but yeah, pretty much we're using only pump down bottles. No, uh, re recovery bottles because obviously we're not reusing the gas. I got the, the, the required gas that we need to put a fresh charge in once we're done. All right, recovery's running now. Um, and just using my probes as well to monitor the pressures because I obviously wanted to try to make it as speedy as possible. So running through gauges usually means it kind of cooks you a bit. Um, so yeah, we'll just monitor the pressures on our probes. Water's pretty hot now, so go swap the water out. bottle's done. Right, fresh bottle. Let's roll. I'm 100% getting the crane to lift these down <laughs> on the roof too. I'm not doing that. There's no way. <laughs> We're slowly making it. We're almost there. Uh, there's about 230 kPa left in the system. I've pulled 13 and a half out of that. Um, yeah, basically just sucking vapor now. Yeah, it's really not looking promising though, eh? <laughs> It's a pretty cool looking cloud, but I wish it wasn't here. Really close, like 80 odd KPA left. Um, probably make it all into this bottle to be honest. I don't imagine there's much more gas left in there. What I'm thinking I'm gonna do too, because I'm gonna try to flow nitrogen while I'm doing my welds. Um, I don't know how well, it, like I don't even know if I can get the nitro through the compressor. I don't think I can, um, but at least if there's some kind of like flow in there, hopefully it'll take away you know, it does the same. Yeah, anyway, I'm gonna try to flow nitro, but because I don't want to basically, uh, I've got like six indoors downstairs and there's a massive pipe run. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna, at about 20 kPa, I'm gonna close off these valves. So when I am flowing nitro, I'm bypassing this and this is an exposed to atmosphere. So at least that way I'm only flowing through the indoors and back up to here. Just didn't make it, eh? <laughs> That's right. So while I've been waiting, I've taken the jacket off the compressor, sanded up these. Um, I might cut this back as well. Um, I've left the connections in there just for the time being, so I've still got power applied. So once I disconnect power, I can easily take those off and also that's still running as well. Um, yeah, we're making progress. Cool, so we're down to about uh, 20. So I'm gonna close these up now. Awesome, all done, got this down to zero KPA. Um, basically just gonna disconnect this. I'll attach my gauges and then we can start trying to flow nitro. I'm thinking what I might try to do is actually cut this out. I prefer to cut out if I can, so I'll cut it out there. Cause obviously this is the stuff going into the, into the compressor. Same thing up there. If I can cut those out and then all I need to do is just basically pull it out. Um, that's the idea anyway, we'll see if that works. All right, so this is our leaking flare. You can see all of the oil and stuff built up. It looks pretty, pretty tasty. Um, we're still waiting on the crane to rock up, so we figure while we're waiting on that, we'll get this flare done. Man, as I'm cutting that flare too, you can hear the rain on the roof. I don't know if you, hopefully that comes across on camera. Man, what a pain in the ass. Uh, so I got the new flare on, I attempted to clean that up as much as I could. Um, but as you can see, there's still, hold on, let's focus. 
there's still a bit of uh, blue shit there. You know, I think it's like the leak lock crap or whatever. But anyway, um, well, we're obviously going to pressure test, so we'll come down and specifically look at this one as well. Kind of hard to see. It's all scoring on the inside and fucking leak lock and shit, so. Uh, had to come up and put the electrical covers back on. You can see it's still kind of spinning. Um, it's light at the moment. Uh, the crane still hasn't arrived. Apparently they're 15 minutes away, so it's they're gonna get hit by one, um, which is, you know, not, not ideal, but whatever it is what it is. The compressor's still obviously in place. We fixed the flare. Um, basically, I've got an apprentice here now, so um, they rocked up about an hour ago. So what I'll get them to do is basically um, communicate with the, the crane guy to lift these bottles up, lift the new compressor on. While they're sorting that out, I'll cut out the new compressor, I cut out the old compressor and get that ready to be shipped. And then we can come actually hopefully just so do a seamless transition. Beautiful, <coughs> crane's rocked up, so it's go time now. So gonna disconnect these, disconnect the stump heater, try to cut this out as best I can. And then Flow Nitro will we'll sweat this out, uh, the, the two ends, hope for the best. Beautiful, so it seems to be, I can just, gets a little stuck there, but awesome. I'm gonna be able to cut this thing out, man. Perfect. So, getting ready to come up now, so I'm gonna go and cut that old one out. And just like that, we have our new compressor. Beautiful, got both the stubs out. So we'll get this new compressor in. So, them in. Looking all right. Chuck some nitro in. So we, yeah, we'll be able to jump downstairs and have a look at it as well, but we'll hit it, we'll hit it with big glue anyway. Slowly getting there. I don't know, this one might be empty too. <laughs> um, just testing my welds anyway. Um, I will also, obviously we'll test it again, but just wanted to see before I go get another bottle, if my welds were leaking, they're looking pretty good at the moment, but again, still got a fair amount of pressure to get up to. Third bottle, we are getting there. I don't know if I mentioned it either, but I did open up the valves on that other condensing unit. So we are pressure testing the entire system. Four bottles in, sitting there. So I will let this stabilize out and then we'll do a pressure test. I've got my suction probe on there for a more accurate reading. Um, but I mean, let's be honest, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know I'll definitely start this way too early and have to start it again. I'm gonna do an oil test on the old compressor. I've never used one of these things before. Yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, see so yeah, how this goes. Also, that is the um, 
freezer that I did the install video with. So fun fact, we're gonna have to move that to over here now because they're gonna replace that one and they wanna move that one into the cage. So little side note there for you. Cool, I think we're all sweet. So according to this, we're safe. So after 30 minutes, we've gone up three KPA. I ended up taking my clamp off because I was getting, it's obviously maybe you've picked it up during the video, but it's pretty windy and then the sun started hitting it and then it's just, just throwing my readings all over the place. So I figured I'd just do it this way. But honestly, I'm really happy with that. So yeah, we'll let the pressure out, get this thing on back. Gonna take the opportunity to, while I've got these two, obviously uh, no pressure in the system, to replace the Schrader cores too. Underway, so like I said, got the Mega Flow Appion uh, vac kit, which is yeah, awesome for this kind of stuff. But man, the hoses are beefy as fuck, eh? Anyway, um, we're gonna try to leave this on overnight. So I've got a bit of what I've tried to do here is uh, let me get underneath and show you. Oh my god, there we go. So because it's gonna rain tonight and also probably be a little bit windy, so I'm hoping that you know, cable tight here cable tied to the hoses and stuff is gonna uh, is gonna get me through the night. So, you know, it's only stupid if it doesn't work. Yeah, I'm pretty confident that'll work. <laughs> um, covers back on, that one obviously cried out to get the hoses out. That's it for day one. Um, we'll come back tomorrow. The plan will be, obviously leave this thing on the back overnight, come back, um, de-energize it, or see what this, obviously the, the, the back's pulled to. Uh, de-energize it, or take it out of refrigerant recovery, de-energize it, then replace that board. I've also got a new um, sump heater. We'll replace that, re-energize it, put it back into a back mo uh, evacuation mode again, do another vacuum for a little while, charge it up, and get it to a point, obviously, where it's working tomorrow. And then the idea being that hopefully I'll have enough time today to, uh, sorry, tomorrow to then plug in the service tool and actually analyze the system because obviously something's taken out that compressor and yeah, like to know why.